Hello friends, welcome to Edureka. This is Ishant and today's session we're going to cover object oriented programming structure in Java. So let's begin and see what and all we are going to cover for the day. We'll see what is object oriented programming. How is it different from the procedural approach? What are the various fundamentals available in object oriented programming? That's like the four main pillars inheritance, abstraction, polymorphism, and encapsulation. So we'll begin with object oriented programming. So, guys, this is one of the software design methodologies that how we're gonna write a software solution in the industry, and it's followed widely. So, what is this object oriented programming? It's a methodology or a paradigm using which we can design our software solutions. Now, there are two major words which you need to focus on. The first one is object, and the second one is class. Now, why object comes first and class later? Because of the term itself, object oriented, not class oriented. So, we'll discuss on these objects and classes. So, guys, object is a real world entity. When I say a real world entity, what does it mean? It means anything which you can see, touch, feel is an object. For example, laptop, mobile phone, chair, table, fan, anything. Even you and me are the objects. So every object will have some state and behavior. What is a class? Class is a blueprint or I can say it's a drawing of an object. So how an object will look like? How object is going to be represented that we can do by having this guy called class. So let's say there is a class called dog, which is a representation how a dog will look like. So we will have a representation in two of the ways. The first one is properties and the second one is behavior. Now properties are also referred to as attributes. For example, what is the weight? What is the age? What is the size, color, breed? So these are the properties. I can even say that they are the attributes which are linked to your object. Behavior goes like eat, sleep, run, bark, etc. and etc. So let's say a nose over here is used for having a process called breathing or a respiration. Respiration is a behavior. So we have object with the properties and behavior. So object will have properties object will have behavior and these properties and behavior will be written in the class to describe the object. So having object oriented programming approach we can have different type of objects. So their properties will remain same but the value for their properties will change. Now the size age color and breed for all the different dog objects. It's gonna change guys, right? So even when I talk about something like employee to a company, let's say plumber, electrician, carpenter, let's say HR, let's say software engineer. Now the different employees, they have the same details. That's like what is their employee ID? What is their name? What is their age? What is their code? But the data for these properties will be different. Now same way the sleep pattern would be different for different people. Right, so this is what we are going to understand that different objects they will have the properties, same properties, but with the different values, right? So I can say an object is a container which is containing properties and behavior both. Now, how we are different from procedural approach, the way we used to write programs in C. So, how is it different, right? Let's have some comparisons coming in here. So Object oriented programming is a bottom to up approach. What does this mean? This means you think of an object first and then you start coding. You think of data first. Top down approach is like where you just start writing the program. We modularize our program into objects, whereas in procedural approach, we need to write functions. For security, we have access modifiers. We got default, private, public protected, but there we have no access modifiers. Objects can move and communicate with each other through member functions, but whereas in function we don't have objects so data is just moving freely. So having access modifiers our uh, software solution can be designed with much more security, right? As compared to procedural approach and lastly, we have features like overloading, overriding, inheritance, and many other features which object oriented programming will give us. 
so that we can very easily design our softwares which procedural programming will not do that now there are four major fundamentals when it comes to object oriented programming structure guys we got encapsulation abstraction polymorphism and inheritance so these are the four major building blocks of any object oriented programming language right so we even call them the pillars for the oops so we'll discuss them one by one to begin with what is inheritance so guys inheritance is where the property of an object will be acquired by the other object will have a relationship called is a relationship so it's a parent child relationship so having this relationship let's say animal is the parent mammals reptiles amphibians and birds they are the children so this is is a relationship bird reptile mammal is an animal right so that is how we are relating them we also call this concept as generalization because here we are generalizing so many different types as one single type right so we call animal as super or the parent class whereas mammals reptiles amphibians birds they are known as sub or the child classes so guys let us have one example on inheritance and thereafter let's try to code it so consider that there is an object structure called product so product is going to have a product id product will have a name product will have a price so these are few of the attributes associated with the product right now i'm taking this use case let's say we are going to develop an e-commerce solution for an e-commerce solution now there will be a product which can be an led tv so led tv will extend the product right so what is the benefit of extending led tv from product so we'll get all these attributes in the led tv as well right so we just need to write additional parameters so we will come here and say what is the brand what can be the technology for led tv and any other attributes if you want to have we can have a mobile which can extend the product so we can have ram what is the os what is the sd card size and many more attributes so extension is what is called inheritance so if we don't have extension so how the things will work let's see that with no extension we need to rewrite a similar code snippet again and again so you see pid name price brand technology is the data associated with led tv same is with the mobile so pid name price they are the common attributes so when we know that we have some common attributes or common properties which will be reused again and again this is like repeating the code again and again whereas when we are coming up with this structure here so we are reusing the similar code again and again you have product as one guy and you now keep on reusing it again and again so let's try to come up and uh, write one small program here and understand this example so i'm gonna say a new java project so we are using eclipse as an id so you can use intellij j developer so whatever you want to use you can use that let's say a new java project i'm gonna say oops so in this object oriented programming structure on the src i'm gonna do a right click and say a new class now this new class over here let us name it inheritance app with the main method so i'm going to write a package let's say co.edureka so this package name co.edureka contains inheritance app with the main method right so we know what is main main is executed by jvm right when my program will run now let's come here and write this class as product and i'm going to write one constructor here which says ciso product object constructed and thereafter 
let's have some attributes we got product id what is the name and let's say what is the price so we can even have more attributes but i got these many details so i'm going to write methods now so this is constructor the default one so the methods i'll say void let's say set product details where i will say let's take three inputs pid name and price so i'm gonna say this dot pid is pid this dot name is name and this dot price is price so we call this guy as a method which is setting the details into the product object i can even say to write data in product object we have this method we also call the methods as behavior and attributes are also referred to as state same way i'll have show product details where i will come and say ciso let's say plus product just give me a moment all right so i'm gonna say product id this and thereafter i'll just have this coming in now i will say ciso name a backslash t plus the name the next way we have price a backslash t and the price so this is the method which will read the data right so to read data from product object so we call this structure this class product is textual representation how an object will look like in the memory right you need to understand that this pid name price they do not belong to the class they belong to object so whatever we write in class is in actual property of object as we are describing the object right so using class you are textually describing the object so pid name price they do not belong to class constructor the methods they belong to the object so if you want something to be property of class if you want anything which should belong to class make it static right so this is what you need to do now coming here guys let us create the product object so create an object what object i want product object let's say product is a new product so remember this statement is an object construction statement but product is not an object it's a reference variable which holds the hash code of the object in hexadecimal notation so what does this mean this means that if i will say product is plus product so when you run this code here as java application you will get to have a product object constructed and this guy reference variable is giving you this 7852e922 so we get 7852e922 as a hash code now this might vary from system to system right so we say product is a reference variable right so product is a reference variable not an object it is pointing to the object which is created in the memory in the heap so next is writing data in object so i will say product dot set the product details let's say product id is 101 let's say name is iphone x let's say the price is 70000 so this is the data within the object which we have wrote and now let's say reading data from object you will say product dot show the product details when you run this code here let me comment out this structure here and here after writing the data i'm just gonna put up this ciso statement 
data return in product object so just to show this so we got product object constructed and then data written in product object and this is data with respect to your product object so this is how we get to see data within the object write and read operations very basic structure of an object now we can even write the data directly coming here let's write the data directly so i can say product dot pid let me create an, another object so i'm gonna say a product this time let's say this as product one is a new product or let's say this is a product two this guy is product one and here i'll say product two dot pid is two zero one product two dot name is nike shoes product two dot price is let's say five thousand so this is writing the data directly sorry my bad so this is integer so you will say product two dot show the product details so just gonna do an empty print line here for the correct output so what you see is product object constructed we are not writing the data using any method we are writing the data directly and you see the data read operation happening again so if you don't want the data to be written directly you can make the attributes go as private so having your attributes as private so you are limiting the user not to write the data directly you see you are now getting an error here so i'm not gonna make everything private let's say the product id is private so when you have any attribute marked as private you will not be able to access it so this is an error now since attribute marked as private cannot be accessed you cannot access an attribute which is marked as private so what we will do now so we can have an indirect way to access pid we can create a method which says set the pid you take integer as input and you say this dot pid is pid so guys when i'm using this so this means reference to the current object so this means reference to current object so the left hand side pid belongs to object right hand side pid belongs to the method set pid okay so lhs belongs to the object and rhs belongs to method so we can similarly say int get pid which returns back the pid so when you say set pid and get pid what does it mean so these are the special methods we call them setters and getters setter and getter is required when you have your attribute marked as private so you have some indirect way of capturing these details in your object so now i can come here and say product 2 dot set the pid as 201 now this is going to work for us so i think the basic product object structure is clear to everyone now moving ahead into our use case where we are going to extend the product right so let us take one example of mobile and extend the product now i'm gonna say a class called mobile where it extends product so this is known as a relation where we say mobile is a product and here mobile is child and product is parent so what i'll do is i'll create a mobile constructor and say a ciso mobile object constructed right so this is how we are going to deal with the object now let us comment out this code snippet in the main so instead of having the direct product object i'm going to write a mobile object now so i'll say a mobile is a new mobile now whenever i am requesting for the mobile object right so we are requesting to 
get mobile object constructed so this is what we are doing here now when you write this instruction what you see is before your mobile object is constructed project product object is getting constructed so it's like parent object is constructed before the object of child right so what is the behavior here so product object gets constructed before the mobile object so as a rule of inheritance it is like firstly you get the parent object constructed and then the mobile object constructed so guys i hope this is clear right so what is happening here we have parent object constructed before the mobile object as this becomes the rule to inheritance and we say this is object to object now you will be glad to see that everything whatever product had will be acquired in mobile right so we can come here and we can say mobile dot set the product details mention the pid let's say 301 mention the name let's say iphone x mention the price let's say seventy thousand, and then you say mobile dot show the product details when you run this code you get to see that a product object constructed mobile object constructed data written in the product object and you see the details flowing for you so guys i hope this is clear right so whatever you had in the parent you got in the child right so we have uh, the things coming up for the child and we can very easily access those things now this product over here we can have something like let's say string what is the os int what is the ram and int what is the size of sd card right so let's say sd card size now these are additional attributes additional attributes of mobile other than the product so these are the additional attributes now what i'm gonna do is i'm going to have this guy over here called set product details let's do a copy here and let's try to do a paste here now i am going to say string os int ram and int sd card size so here i'll say this dot os is os this dot ram is ram and lastly this dot sd card size is sd card size you see pid is not accessible we are getting an error here it says it's not visible because it's marked as private so private is not inherited and visible into the child all right i'm gonna make this pid as default so we'll talk about the excess modifiers later but we are focused on understanding the oops here now we actually have this same method name set product details right so we have redefined the same method from the parent into the child with different inputs so we got two methods in the child so we have now two methods in the child one from parent and one of child right so both are different as in based on inputs right even though name is same even though name is same they are different based on the inputs so whatsoever belongs to the parent that is inherited into the child and now in the child we have the same method coming up again why we did this because we wanted to set the data for the additional attributes so this is known as method over loading same method name with different inputs so what i can do now is why to access the parents method here i can have my own method mobile dot set the product details with the pid let's say 301 name let's say iphone x 
price let's say 70000 os let's say ios ram let's say 4 sd card size let's say 128 and thereafter i'm gonna say mobile dot show the product details now when you run this code guys what we see is it says data written in product object so what i can do is i can just manipulate this and i can say data written in mobile object when you run this code you see data written in the mobile object but whatever you are reading is the one which was inherited from the parent so this read method show product details is inherited from the parent and that is being used here so hence we cannot see more than three details i'll redefine this method as well so let's redefine show product details as well but here we have same inputs two methods one from parent one in child and we have same signatures when i say same signatures it means they have same input details so what i'll do is i'll extend the data here so we'll have os we'll have ram and we'll have sd card so we'll have this os ram and sd card size now what you will observe is that when the show product details will be executed so we got two show product details method one in the parent one in the child so child method will be executed and not the parent method so this fundamental over here is referred to as overriding very very beautiful concept guys so overriding versus overloading method overloading whereas this is method overriding so same method name with same inputs in parent child relationship so only in a parent child relationship now when you run this code here what you see is the other details also coming in now we know the reason that why we need to overload a method why we need to override a method we need to overload a method so that we can write the exact data which we want so we are customizing this method in the child we are overriding the method so that we can display more data so we are customizing the methods in the child right so overloading and overriding is what where we are having customizations to predefined methods we don't want this predefined method we want the way we want to present the data and we have it in front of us so this is a very quick introduction to object oriented programming structure guys so now let us come here and understand the next part so inheritance is where one object will acquire the properties of other object it is a relationship the parent child relationship so synthetically you need to come up and say extends so which is extension right what are the advantages code reusability so we are reusing the code having an extensibility we are using overriding we are even having the features to hide the data if you privatize any attribute you won't be able to inherit it so we got different types of inheritance so you got single level multi-level and hierarchical where single level is one parent one child multi-level is parent to child to grandchild and hierarchy is having one parent with more than one children multiple inheritance that's opposite of hierarchy is not supported in java so there is no virtual keyword there is no pointer technique in java by which we can solve the problems like dreaded diamond here so in single level inheritance we got one parent and we got one child so arrow is upwards because b is an a right so it's extension relationship then we have multi-level parent to child child to grandchild and thereafter guys we got hierarchy where one parent with the multiple children so remember we don't have support for multiple inheritance in java that's like the reverse of this hierarchy multiple parents having the same object next is polymorphism so guys it is having the same name with the different different definitions so you can say 
mothers, they are the best example of polymorphism. They handle kids, they handle office, they handle home. More than one form, right? So here, polymorphism can happen in two different ways, compile time and runtime. So what is compile time versus runtime? So compile time means overloading. We call it static polymorphism. So compiler will ensure which method will be executed for which function call. So there are some rules to overload. The method name should be same and the argument list or the inputs to the method that should be different and unique. So the other form is runtime polymorphism. That's like dynamic polymorphism where we got method overriding. All right. So overriding we got some rules coming in here. So the rules to override is where the method name should be same input should be same return type is something which must be same or the subtype of the overridden method and access level it must be same or more restrictive now what is abstraction guys so abstraction is achieved using abstract classes and interfaces so this is where we achieve a runtime polymorphism in a different approach right so here we have an abstract class so an abstract class is created using an abstract keyword so here we will have the methods with the abstract keyword we even have non abstract methods this is a class for which you cannot create objects you can have constructors you can have static methods but we cannot create the object right so you can even have the final methods so abstract class x as a template for the various methods and definitions to be executed so moving ahead so the better version of abstract class is an interface so interface is a blueprint for a class which will contain some constants and abstract methods so it will enable a multiple inheritance and helps in achieving the loose coupling so a class can extend a class a class implements an interface now this is one of the major differences between classes and interfaces so we got interface to interface inheritance as well so guys abstract class and interfaces so as in practically we'll see it in our other sessions so lastly what is encapsulation where we are going to privatize the data so we can have an attribute we can mark it as private and when the attribute is marked as private it cannot be accessed so we need setters and getters so as to access this private data so encapsulation leads to data hiding so it is focusing on security so this is all from my side and edureka so thank you so very much guys have a wonderful time ahead once again this is ishant on behalf of edureka so in case you have enjoyed the session so do review us do subscribe to our youtube channel and do like our facebook page thank you guys bye bye i hope you have enjoyed listening to this video please be kind enough to like it and you can comment any of your doubts and queries and we will reply them at the earliest do look out for more videos in our playlist and subscribe to edureka channel to learn more happy learning